let's have an in-depth look at headstand and bridge walkovers. In this video we will start with the headstand walkover because it's quite easy to understand and it already teaches us certain key mechanisms that we then can also use for the bridge walkover. Now for the headstand walkover really make sure that you have solid headstands and that your neck is also strong enough for you to be able to stand in a headstand. And then later if you want to go for the bridge walkover make sure that you have solid bridges otherwise this one is unattainable to you and might be just too hard. Whoa 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 you cannot bridge? Check out the video description I got a video where you can learn it. So without further ado let's start with the headstand walkover. So let's take care of warming up our neck at first with forwards and backwards head tilts and then the same thing also to the side. Already load your head. If you feel comfortable try to do the same thing being in a headstand. This really is a good one. Then try to understand the specific headstand arm positions for the headstand walkover which is arms not in front but behind. So you can also balance this arched position as you can see right here. Fingers can point inwards to make it easier. Now every time you feel tight simply shake out your head, shake out your shoulders and we can continue. So really before going for the back walk over try to understand a little bit this balanced arched shape. Alright so the next step after learning this overbalanced handstand and especially this specific hand position let's directly put it to use against the wall. Now the wall is a great friend because you can be sure it will be there if you're falling. So the task is now go on top of a headstand, reach backwards with one of your legs and now already try to overemphasize one of the key details from this overbalanced headstand where the legs will go one direction while your chest and the center of your torso goes towards the other. So you're not just falling against the wall but you're really trying to find the state of slowly lowering down while one thing goes this way, one thing goes that way. Okay, if you feel very comfortable doing this drill against the wall and you can go quite low, use one foot against the wall, the other on the floor and kick over, then it's time to upgrade using some sort of elevated surface. This one is a tad harder because you're not just resting against the wall but you actively need to go down onto a horizontal surface. So this one is a little bit more scary. As best as you can, fight Falling means you don't just want to fall over, but you once again want to find this counterbalance point so you can let yourself go down. Depending on your mobility, depending on your proportions, you will be able to do it without falling at all or you will fall a little bit. For me personally, there is always going to be a little bit of falling, but I try to limit it. Now, the way that I like to work here is find a distance where I can easily manage to go on top of the object and then try to kick back again. Again, the kick back needs to be accompanied by chest leading this way. So most of my mass is already transitioning towards the other side. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe. This video is taken from one of my online programs, so if you really enjoy it, check them out, many more like this. Cool, so we got the overbalanced headstand, we got the headstand against the wall, now on top of our surface, now it's time to take it more and more towards the floor. Of course you can work your way down from a surface all the way until you hit the floor or you can also say after reaching about this high of 
maybe 30, 20 centimeters like this, maybe just try it directly on the floor. So the great thing is here that falling is not really bad because you're already very much close to the floor, a fall usually is not that bad. As long as you use your legs in order to catch the fall like a scorpion, you're good to go. Now this one, you can either practice going from a headstand over and back to neutral again. You can also start lying on your back, then going for a very small condensed headstand and try to simply go over. Both ways are fine. Try to practice both, see which one resonates. If you feel comfortable with all of the previous tasks, then going for the full walkover should be quite nice. At first, practice just falling into this bridge and then try to aim for a couple of jumps. Now there is again this coordination, rolling over the head, leading with the chest and pulling with the leg. As you can see here, it was just a little bit too much. So ah, even with a leg change, it's possible. Falling back, leg change, also a nice variation. From here you can see it nicely. Readjusting my hands, this is helpful as well. A couple jumps and then really trying to gain momentum, pulling with my leg over again. This is the big thing here. There is a nice way to start smoothly from the floor, where you pull your hands really close to your shoulders, not too far away. So you can use this to then take a step and directly go over yourself. With a little bit of practice, this one really feels great. Lying on your back, pulling in your hands, onto your head, and your whole body wants to kind of push over already. Chest and belly and legs. With the head stand over, you can of course also play. And you can combine the ideas that we learned now with the ideas from the headstand and low position balance video, right? Find it in the video description. Now you could basically try to build little sequences or improvise a little bit. How could you go now from a lying on the back position on top of your head and maybe playing with a handstand shape, headstand shape, or maybe even go for a little bit of a rotation on top of your head. So all of these possibilities are there now for you to explore. Now, personally, to me, all of these very crouched position skills, like all of the QDRs, all of the headstands, forearm stands, they are very much related and you can find a very small, compromised, compressed flow. It's not something that reminds me of a jungle cat, like things that I usually like to do. It's more kind of like a very small, like a groundhog or something, right? Uh, a little bug kind of crawling around, a little snake, something like this, which is kind of like twirling in itself. So all of these very much com condensed movements fit quite nicely together to me. And I simply like to improvise with them and find nice little combinations in this very crouched position. Hey you, if you're interested in diving into a dynamic, rich and playful movement practice while learning great skills, then check out my Finding Flow online programs. Apart from the skills, you of course also learn how to mobilize, strengthen and condition your body. And of course, how to find some flow. As a newcomer, check out my Finding Flow basics or integration courses or directly go for the entry bundle, a perfect start. If you already bring some skills to the table, check out the Acrobatics Lab online program. Of course, like in all others, all skills are being broken down in high quality videos. This one is really packed. Coming through YouTube, use the code YouTube10 for a 10% discount. 
and find everything on neilteisner.shop. Okay, now when it comes to learning the bridge walkover, then basically all of the mechanisms that we already learned in a headstand walkover are equally as relevant. So we had this idea of widening our arms now, especially for people with more limitations in a regular bridge. Me personally, I don't feel very comfortable in a very narrow, fully straight arm bridge. So I need to open up my grip a little bit, turn my fingers a little bit more inwards and bend my arms slightly. So this is something that we have, but then of course we also have this idea of counter weight. So when I go into my bridge and walk over or backwards, it's not just falling, but it's helping by pushing my rib cage in an opposite position, okay? So this again is the key principle that needs to happen if we want to do it with control and grace. The learning steps are basically exactly the same as in the headstand walkover. At first you want to make sure that you have a solid bridge where you feel comfortable so you can already start thinking about something like the bridge walkover. Then make sure to warm up yourself like you would do for a bridge. Wrists, opening up the shoulders a little bit, maybe even working a couple of low bridges and then high bridges. And then it's time to work with the wall. So remember in the headstand walkover, we use the wall to um, simply go against the wall, lower the other leg more towards the floor, and then basically go over the bridge back into a headstand and a handstand. Now, what we can do here is exactly the same thing. So I will start at first rather close to the wall, but then relatively fast, I want to make sure to walk away. So I have a lot of space here so I can actually arch down towards the floor. The idea is once again, not only just to use the wall in order to go back, but to already lead with your chest towards the side. And then secondly, as soon as one of my legs is flying and the other one as well, make sure that you actively pull in your leg towards the other side, because this one helps you to drive over towards the floor again. As soon as you feel comfortable doing the bridge walk over against the wall, relatively soon we need to work with an elevated surface. Again, this one is much scarier because at the wall you can simply fall and you won't fall backwards because the wall is stopping you. As soon as the surface that you're using is horizontal, it won't stop you this way. It only stops you from crashing down. So already here, work with a surface that is quite high so that a potential fall backwards is just a short way basically. I only have this height right now available. Usually of course for beginners I'd say start with something that is definitely kind of like in the mid thigh region, maybe even the hip region, just to get an idea how it feels going back onto the surface and to the other side again. Like in a headstand walkover we can start again by going backwards on top of this object and simply jumping a couple times without actually making the full walkover motion. Only then when you understand this, try to go for the full one by really leading with your chest forwards, time it perfectly with a foot of the push, and then as soon as you can pull one leg over to have a lot of drive this way. So the first repetitions like this will probably be falling down, which is okay. But with time and practice, you should be able to control yourself down by using this mechanism that I've spoken about so much. Chest pushing one way while the legs go the other. So I can arch my way down. Now at first, practice jumping like in the headstand walkover. Gaining momentum by pushing into your leg and opening up your chest as much as you can. And as soon as you feel it, then you can use your leg to pull yourself over. Knee and leg pulling over.
the journey of the bridge walk over can take quite a while. I guess you heard me say this a lot in these programs. Well, and this is simply the truth. The more we go into complex movements, they can really take months and even years to fully develop. So be patient with this one, okay? Work with an elevated surface and try to understand it better and better. Now, the next step from going from elevation to the floor could be to practice at first kicking up into a handstand and slowly lowering, maybe even at first falling towards the other side without even thinking about going back over yourself, okay? Maybe the, um, the time in between learning this one and achieving a full back walk over could be months even here. So already having a headstand, handstand, fall over and then continue from here is something great to explore. I personally, I'm not quite good at all of these arch shapes in a handstand, so there is going to be some fall for me when going over, but this is okay. So I will demonstrate a couple of ideas how to go from a handstand down into the floor, what we could do, and then already give a couple demonstrations how the full bridge walk over could look like. Well, and this is it for this video. I really hope that you liked it. Now, if you want to support me, check out my online programs, which you can purchase on www.neiltheisner.shop. Make sure to comment on this video if you liked it, if you have any topics that I should cover in the future. And of course, remember to subscribe to this channel, turn on the notification bell to not miss any of the upcoming videos. Wishing you a happy practice and see you the next time. Ciao, ciao.